Uh, welcome. Welcome to Toy Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, Zara just went, went to the doctor. Things are improving. That's great. Awesome. Right, right Pete? No, no, no history at all. No, no gigantic shifts in, uh, you know, capitalism and all these other things happening right now. But yes, we are going to take some time out from staring at the news and refreshing things constantly to look at some t toys. Now, as everybody who's here knows, it was Tuesday. <laughs> as everybody here knows, I am a big fan of spaceships in general, and specifically Star Trek spaceships. Probably, yeah, like as a whole, um, as a, and when we're talking about like entire properties, Star Trek are definitely definitely has the most spaceships that I really like. And thankfully, over the years, there have been a bunch of Star Trek toys. So let's see. How should I do this? I brought out some things to look at. Um, let's look at... Should we go back in time? Let's go back in time. So obviously, we've looked before at... Micro Machines. So Micro Machines had a, like I've talked about, a quite sizable collection of Star Trek and Star Wars and a bunch of other properties. So the Star Trek Micro Machines are about an inch, inch and a half or so. And yeah, just like huge amounts of detail on these things. Really good sculpts. They came in mainly in three packs, but then in larger, what they call like collector packs, which had exclusive ships you could only get in those sets, uh, which raised their prices dramatically on the secondary market. So in fact, when I was collecting these things later on, uh, <laughs> going to find some of those, those more rare ones cost quite a bit of money. I believe I have at least one of every Star Trek micro machine that was made. In some in some cases, many many copies of certain ships. Yeah, like the uh, the future Enterprise D was one of those exclusive ones that you could only get in one of those bigger sets. At least one. I don't have quite one of every toy, every toy ever made, but uh, I'm I'm on my way. So yeah, these are super great. Uh, they came with they came with these little bases, many of which, many of mine at least, have yellowed over time to some degree. This one's actually not too bad. In in person, it's a little yellow. Um, they all have the same hole underneath. Uh, they did a whole bunch of aliens. I those are in a box somewhere. I don't have all of those ready at hand oh they have like the botany bay so they did these from the movies the old old uh tos next generation voyager deep space nine and that is it yeah so fortunately we didn't get some of the we didn't get series after that obviously but um green ships Did I show a green ship? Green ships. Oh, is it my colors off today? If that's what. <laughs> oh, these. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Mike. I don't know why it, my colors off. So this is a this is a Kazon ship from. Yeah, sorry. It's it's supposed to be yellow. I don't know why. <sighs> When we, um, for anyone who was watching yesterday, I switched around my setup here in the room. So now I'm, I'm facing a different way, but the lights are different and I didn't have time to go in and poke around at all the, all the settings. Yeah. It's just cause the, the lighting is different on the side of the room a little bit. Um, let me see if I can fix it real quick. Oh, probably not, but let me bring up the sliders. 
my favorite thing to do. <laughs> uh, okay, the white balance slider does nothing, so that's always good. Definitely could use some brightness. Well, maybe brightness will just fix it. Uh, that looks better already. Let's go with that. Yeah, so this is a Kazon Torpedo from Voyager. It was weird. It was like the Voyager really wanted the Kazon to be interesting, and they just weren't. I don't know. Um, let's see. This is an, another Kazon ship. The Kazon were an alien species that had a bunch of different factions. So their ships looked different depending on which faction they were in. There were raiders and dreadnoughts and all sorts of stuff. Uh, this one, I admit I don't remember what species this ship <laughs> belongs to. There were a, a lot of... it's. This was a... I think this was actually a design that was reused a couple times on screen for different for different aliens. But, uh, but yeah, like I said, and there are, I don't know, a hundred of these things not more got Romulans oh I already I already had one of those that uh, yeah so from Voyager we even have the caretaker array which is a really cool miniature and again like they did a they did a good job with all of the detail on these And this line, as far as as far as I can tell, going back and researching, because I was I was still fairly young when it came out, but um, it seems like this line was pretty popular when it came out. And then, like I said, on the secondary market, and even till today, these are uh, definitely sought after. And as a phallic qualities, yeah, these are they're very pointy and uh, <laughs> yes. Um, let's see what other ones. Obviously, there were a bunch of Klingon ships, repaints of the same mold. Oh, there is one ship that I know of that I don't have. That's right. So there's the standard Klingon Bird of Prey. They all were in this configuration, but they had one that had uh, posable wings. So it could go f straight out or down at this angle, and I do not have that ship. Uh, I think it was specifically, was it specifically a Star Trek IV pack? It might have been. So it was a three pack, and the other two ships were just duplicates of stuff that they had released in other packs, but then they had that one unique one, and I don't think I ever got that one. It was short packed. It was like one of the, the rarest of the, the sets. Ferengi, little Bajoran or Bajoran fighter. So yeah, like I said, and I have I have boxes of these that I still need to eventually put out on display. Oh, so so this is the Stargazer, and there's a really interesting story as to why. This toy is yellow. And I don't exactly remember it. <laughs> so at a Comic-Con four or five years ago, uh, there was a panel put on by Eagle Moss. And I'm going to talk about Eagle Moss in a moment. I've talked about them a lot before. They're pretty much the main company these days making Star Trek ship collectibles. But... Um, for this panel, it was it was amazing. They brought they brought in and had on some really, like the the most iconic starship designers from Star Trek, like from who did ships for all of the old shows and from the movies, and it was really cool hearing their stories. But the one of the guys, and I can't remember their names. I can't remember who it was, but he was talking about this ship in particular, and that apparently when they made the model for this ship. Well, number one, they kitbashed the original filming model of this from a bunch of different just crap that was around. And that's like a running theme in Star Trek ship design, like the physical ships, especially the old ones that were physically made. Obviously, nowadays, everything is on 
computer. Hold on a second, maybe. Can I make this even brighter? Is that good or is that too bright? I think that's good. All right. Yeah, just the like I said, the lighting on the side of the room is not the best. Uh, so anyway, so first of all, yeah, it has just a whole bunch of weird designs. So the top doesn't look too bad, but on the bottom, and again, this is part of the original of the original design. There are all of these like little bits and doodads that were stuck on. Hey, Demon Blight. So there's, there's little these little pod things back here. And for whatever reason, and again, I forget exactly how the story goes, but it's like when they went to paint it, the only paint they had in the studio was this weird yellow color. So that's what they just painted to get a like a primer down on it. But then somebody saw it and thought that was going to be the final color and and, and took pictures of it. it some, some goofy thing like that. But it became known that like that this ship was that color in some at some point in the process of, of creating it. So, uh, yeah, so it made it to the toy. So they did the toy. Now, obviously, again, if you watched the Next Generation episode with the Stargazer, it did not look like this on the show. It was not a horrendous yellow color. But that's like one of those weird little bits of, of Star Trek history, Star Trek lore. Um, let's see. The Also, the future. This was another one of those rarer ships that came in one of those big packs. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, like, even the, the Tampo graphics were really crisp. They're very small. And the registries, you can read them all. The USS Pester from the future. So, yeah, like I said, really, really great toy line. Uh, it would be cool if they brought it back and then we could get all the ships from the shows that came subsequent to the ships from the shows and movies that came subsequent to these but what are you going to do the the ships from whiz kids the future future exactly well and the future past when we talk about discovery and stuff like that uh the ships from whiz kids for star trek attack wing so these molds that are used in the star trek attack wing are also in hero clicks for star trek Tactics Heroclix. They use the same molds, just the Heroclix base or the base for this game. There are also some of them are available in unpainted versions. So you can paint them yourselves. Again, same sculpt. And these are they're not too terribly far off from the micro machines. So again, like if you if you wanted to mix and match, or if you wanted to use some alternate sculpts for your attack wing games you certainly could um, that'd be possible i love the defiant this one is famously like super super chunky for whatever reason they couldn't get like a really slim mold on it it's, it's, it's kind of like they inflated it but it's cute Even way, way back when these toys were made, people were doing all sorts of crazy resin modeling and doing stuff. So on eBay, a million years ago, I picked up a bunch of these. So somebody made a mold of the Defiant Micro Machine and then ran them in clear resin. Because the if you are not familiar, the Defiant was, at that time at least, the only Federation starship ever equipped with a cloaking device so these were like cloaked defiant versions and they do have all that sculpted detail on them which is pretty cool oh, this one has a little bit of garbage on it but yeah and again somebody was just selling these on ebay 20 years ago <laughs> and again because it's the defiant i have i have several <laughs> Why not? Let's see. I also picked up... There were a lot of people who also made customs with these. Just kit bashing pieces together, which is, again, like that's literally how the actual designers made ships, especially when you get into some of the episodes where there are huge starship battles and they just wanted to fill up a bunch of space in the background. 
they just took model kits that were in the shop and just mashed them together and made crazy new designs. So toy people did the same thing. So this was something I also bought on eBay and it's some sort of Romulan dreadnought, whatever. But if you look closely, this thing is made from the parts of just a million micro machines and other spaceship toys. Um, one thing fell off over here. I have to fix it one day, but, uh, yeah, I I love this kind of stuff just to see how much of the how much of it I can recognize and figure out. Like these these wings are from from a really cool old War Planets toy. So it's like, oh, I know what that's from. And then obviously you can see on the bottom here the base of it is an old Romulan bird of prey with everything attached on top. So yeah, some people did some really inventive customizations on some of these things or just like creating their whole unique own new vessels. Oh yeah, and speaking of customs, so this War Planets. Oh, Zardoz, I have a ton of war planets slash shadow raiders depending on where in the world you're from i have a ton of those toys i am a huge huge fan of that show and of the toys uh one day i will get access to them and do a whole i will do an entire toy tuesday all about war planets and shadow raiders freaking love that property uh so this is one of the federation designs that micro machines did not get to this is a wooden ship that somebody carved and then painted again an old 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 ebay find it doesn't it it looks great from a little bit far away up close it's a it's a little rough but uh i know rabbit wombat it's just that um a lot of my war planet stuff is it's like it's really wrapped up and to open all of that to be able to do would it it's just time i just need time i know i know i know i want to do that i'll i'll try to prioritize it on my list no i know but like i do really want to do it it's just it's just the time i need to to prepare for it so yeah this is uh no this is so this one specifically is the equinox from voyager and they, were, they used this ship in a couple of different designs. There was a future version that they met that was captained by Harry Kim. But that version, the front was was essentially filled in. So it had a, a just a pointy front. But this one with the sensor palette was the Equinox that was also sent into the Delta Quadrant during the time that Voyager was. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, so yeah, when, hey, Erdinsk, welcome, welcome. Yes, I, first of all, I still have, I still have things that I've just never opened from their actual boxes, and I still have stuff that was boxed up from when we moved 10 years ago <laughs> that I still need to get to, but I have a lot of junk. Um. So yeah, so this is all micro machines or micro machine scale that was custom made. But then there are a bunch of other stuff that came out that was around this scale. So for instance, here is So here is a an Excelsior from Micro Machines. And then this is Excelsior class, colors are obviously different made from a company in Japan. So in the 90s, there were a bunch, a bunch of really cool Star Trek ships made in Japan from a few different companies. For whatever reason, it was it was big there at the time. Uh, I always forget all the names, but Furuta was one of the companies. Romando was another company. And there was a third big one in Japan at the time that I cannot remember. 
and they varied in scale. But hey, Patty. Yes, I hope I hope everybody voted. If you haven't, please go and do so somehow. Good, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so this was one of those those Japanese ships, and again, there were a whole bunch of them uh, in slightly different scales and sizes. Let me grab. And they had some kind of cool gimmicks like. This one gave you a clear version to go with it, and they had little bases. Do you, you voted twice? Okay, good. <laughs> vote early, vote often, right? Excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so they did this. Like I said, you know, a lot of gimmicks to try to sell more ships. Uh, let me put this back together the right way. So here we have the uh, the NX Enterprise. Then the cells came separate. I think I have to glue this to keep it together, but you get the idea. So several of the ship sets would come with a base version and then like a clear one or... In some of the cases, they would come with one that had a paint like this, and it was, and the little windows were glow in the dark, which was pretty neat. Yeah. And then what I really loved about the line is that they had itty bitty versions, because. Boy, oh boy, do I love small-scale toys, especially spaceships. That one's pretty tiny. <laughs> I don't even light, right? The cells are always falling off, falling every which way. Oh, yeah, and even with this, with the tiny one, you got a standard version and a darker version with some glow-in-the-dark paint on it. Some of these lines would get into battle damage stuff. So we've got Constellation from the original series, all bashed and smashed up. Very small. Okay, so that was one box. Toss these all back real quick. And yes, for my very special collection of Star Trek ships, I had these laid out in a box so that nothing was really touching and overlapping so much. Although it's gotten a little bit messy now, but you can see sort of like what that looked like. Okay. All right, let's see what's in the next box. But yeah, so we had a few different Japanese companies making the toys. There was also uh johnny what was it johnny johnny lightning is that the company they make a lot of is it johnny lightning am i thinking of the right things they make a lot of um uh toy cars yeah so johnny lightning did a line of star trek ships which i just remembered um shoot unfortunately i can't access any of those right now but those were really cool and again like they did a whole bunch of battle damage versions and some with little translucent blasts coming off of it. Ooh, yeah, okay, here's some more. So we have space stations, space, um, star bases, deep space, not, oh, it's upside down. 
Come on, focus. There we go. Obviously, there is no scale in Micro Machines because, you know, this thing is super gigantic. Ships would fly in through these openings and they could hold a bunch of ships inside. And this is, I guess, super massive, but what are you going to do? Compared to Shuttlecraft, Voyager Shuttle. Oh yeah, so here's some of the war planet. Beast beast planet ships. They are they would fit into projectile launchers, that's why they have these different back ends to them. How do you get to the dry dock? Well, they, Like in a mini in a miniature version, or when it's in full size and they open the doors. And yeah, at at when these micro machines were being made, they also they also went like I said, completely nuts as far as licensing. So because I have the box handy, we had Babylon Five. Earth Force One here. Uh, where is actual Babylon 5? Oh, here it is. Babylon 5, the station itself. I wish they had made a really big version of this. That would be super cool. Oh, yeah, without the warp core, you're just puttering around in space. And, yeah, you definitely need, need a tow. Right here. So if we want to look at Babylon 5 real quick, got a Centauri shuttle, Vorlon ship, right, here's the other one, a couple of Vorlons. Oh yeah, the paint, the colors on, on these ships were, were great. A lot of variety. Here's the... Other than the, the bright colors of Earth Force One, because again, it's like um, it's like Air Force One, so it's got pretty colors. But otherwise, their colors were more drab. So we've got a fighter, Let's see. various kind of boring shuttles. Mimbari stuff was all great because it was all. Pretty blues and purples looking like underwater stuff. Oh, a lot of colors popping on that one. Narn were like more harsh blues and reds. Oh, and then, yeah, here's another a Narn fighter. Here's another Centauri ship. So, yeah, I made a whole bunch of these kind of random. Oh, here's another Narn ship. Some of the Narn ships were really cool. So, yeah, this is the famous line... Oh, here's, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot, <laughs> and, and, there, and there are more. Um, so this was the interesting line where Micro Machines did these toys, and then if you bought the action figures, which were fairly junky action figures, um, but the action figures came with ships that were not in scale, but if you have, so for instance, here's the Micro Machine version of this, I don't know, Earth Federation shuttle, whatever. And then this is the version that came with the action figure. So obviously, bigger, clunkier. Sculpts are not nearly as detailed, but 
they're cool in their own right. And I can show you a few examples of the, of the differences. So again, Micro Machine, uh, Star Fury, Thunderbolt, something. And then the version that came with the toy action figure. Mimbari Fighter. Mimbari Fighter. So yeah, sometimes the colors were different. You might call them off. Uh, these bigger ones, they there's no hole because they didn't come with bases. So you just kind of just drop them down. I've seen some people build bases for these, but I don't have anything like that. The Babylon 5 itself looks the worst. Narn Fighter, Narn Fighter. So yeah, they're basically just larger versions, uh, not quite as detailed. Oh, here we have, I believe this is called the Charlin class. And then that one. Yeah, you can see just the, the Micro Machine just has so much great paint detail. And this one, they're like, yeah, we have, we have a couple of splashes of paint. Again, it's not bad. It's just not as detailed as these little guys. Well, we all know Babylon 4 was the coolest of the Babylon uh, space stations. And then in the action figure line, we got a couple of ships that... Uh, that we didn't get in Micro Machine form. So the Centauri... I don't know if it's a battle cruiser or something, but a larger Centauri warship. So we have it in, in this way. And then, yes, the only way to get a toy of the White Star was if you bought the Marcus Cole Ranger action figure, and then you got this White Star toy with it. There are a couple of White Star models out there, um, but this is the only actual toy that was made. No, no Micro Machines White Star toy. All the Micro Machines Babylon 5 stuff was like just from the first couple seasons. Yeah, Aaron, it's, it's, not, it's not the best paint job. It's in person, it's a little bit better. It's a little darker in person. And Arsenal Roy, that, that is true. Yeah, going back and watching some of the stuff, it's it's a little rough. And yes, I was able to find the Marcus Cole action figure pretty cheaply at times. I would go on eBay and I would just just search for it all the time. So, and whenever I found one that wasn't that wasn't too expensive, I would buy Marcus Cole after Marcus Cole after Marcus Cole <laughs> after Marcus Cole so I could have a nice little white star fleet. I ended up with a lot of extra Marcus Cole action figures. Uh, I, I no longer have them. I donated them or melted them down or something. Yeah, I could totally do repaints on these. Because I have a few. <laughs> well, come on. When it's like your favorite ship, you want a whole fleet of them. I'm not the only one who does that, right? Right. How did we get on Babylon 5? What happened? Get me on these tangents. Oh, here's a Reliant that I battle damaged, which was fun. Boom. Uh, no, there were no shadow ships in in these lines. No, they didn't get in they didn't get into those any of those wacky uh, first one ships. I love those designs though. Uh, let's see. So yeah, while we're on the subject and while I have this box open, they did one micro machine f oh, does anybody know what, what this ship is from? 
Can anybody ID this one? It's from a movie. Anybody know that one? Ah, good job, Rabbit Wombat. Yeah, Titan AE. A really interesting movie. Um, I don't, controversial, I guess. Some people really like it. Some people don't. I thought it was cool. I thought it had some neat neat elements, neat designs at least. But yeah, they did one, one Micro Machines um, set, and then they had like a, um, a play set of the actual Titan AE ship that opened up. Which I have somewhere. Where is that? But anyway, yeah. So this is the like one of the hero ships, and then uh, here's the oh, what was what were these things called? Shoot, I can't remember. Planet Bob, right? <laughs> and then yeah, this actually had a projectile launcher in the front of it, which was pretty rare for. Rare to have an action feature. Um, yeah, I think it was just these two, and then, like I said, there were there was the the big opening playset, and then a, a a toy, a big toy version of this one, a huge one that you could put action figures in. Oogly, hello. Uh, doing okay so far today. Taking a look at spaceship toys, which is always fun. Waiting to look at the news a little bit later on. <laughs> so yeah, we've got Babylon 5, Star Wars, Star Trek, Titan AE of all things. They did some alien. So here we have the derelict. Mm -hmm. Yep, good old. Cool design there. And for the... So they did Alien and Predator and Terminator, which is really cool. And again, like, just rated our stuff. And then they're making little kids' toys of it. So here we have... Oh, and the Sulaco from Aliens. Uh, no Firefly in this line. No. Dark Horse did a, a line of Firefly ships that were about... But yay big um, metal that came on nice little bases. And those those are really neat. Oh yeah, those Star Fury model kits were yeah, those were great. So we've got the Sulaco. We've got the oh, there's the Nostromo with these funky little landing gears. Yeah, exactly. Well, there is the one Rosinante toy that was the loot crate have you seen that one uh the narcissist shuttle the the apc with spinning wheels i think this moves oh yeah it, it actually so not only does it rotate but it, it folds back, which is such a great feature. Yeah, no, the Rosinante from the Loot Crate, it's not great, but I was able to, to buy one for like under $10 shipped. So I was like, hey, if that's the if that's the only way I can easily get a Rosinante, then I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah, Planet Express ship, exactly. It, it, it just like that. And then how cool is this? Focus. Swing out. Weapon pods. What's the technical? Is the the Cheyenne dropship? I think it is. Neat little folding mechanism too, so that both fit in there flush. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, obviously U.S. shipping is within the country is a lot easier. Um, this is another one that that there was a time when Japan was pumping out a lot of this kind of stuff. So here is, I don't remember the company that made this, 
but here's a Japanese yeah it just has the Fox logo but a slightly larger scale Japanese drop ship let me get that to focus there we go a lot of good details on this one I have an APC from this line too, but it's not in this box for some reason. It's around here somewhere. Uh, yeah, so we have alien, aliens there. Um, they threw Terminator into the mix. So we've got Hunter Killer. Whoa, just throw that anywhere. Pretty neat. And again, these were just like kids' toys from a bunch of R-rated movies. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. And then the Predator. Predator ship. And I always forget the lore if this was like the one they designed for the first movie, but then you never saw it. Or if this was the design for Predator 2. I, I I can never remember. But yeah. It, yeah. I know, right? It's it's, it's very soft. Um, I'm looking. I think that's it for, for those lines. All right. Here's, here's another test for you folks watching at home. Can you identify these? Anybody know what these are from? Anybody, anybody? This one, I swear to God, it was not even on screen. I don't I don't think this ever was actually on screen. This one was for a second on a video monitor. Kind of looked like this. Yeah, so these are from Men in Black, <laughs> the first movie. This was the the warship that comes to threaten Earth with if they don't give back the galaxy or whatever. So yeah, you see it on screen for a second looking all ominous and shooting warning shots at the earth. But again, this is technically from Men in Black 2, but I don't I don't think this was ever actually on screen. So they may have designed some ships uh and then put, you know, put toys into into production again a year in advance and then it was cut from the movie. But yeah, so they did a Babylon or a Babylon. They did a Men in Black set of micro machines. <laughs> because why not? Um, I think that's all the the weird and wacky micro machine stuff I have from from this box anyway. I was gonna say, oh, here's another really cool custom that somebody did. Hey, Hudsonizer. So there was a Borg cube in the micro machines line, and somebody took this cube and they added this. So it's launching. The sphere, how cool is that? Like that's just a great, a great custom. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was pretty, and they repainted this too. The original didn't look quite this good. Yeah, so yeah, neat stuff like that. Okay. All right, let me grab So the Micro Machines line also came with little figures. So we have tiny, tiny Colonial Marines. Uh, this is the pilot of the dropship, I believe. 
Very, very small. Oh, Hudsonizer, that's that's cool. I, Deep Space Nine is my favorite of the Star Trek series. I don't know if I'd recommend people to start it first. That, that'll be an interesting voyage of discovery. But um, And then here's the, the little tiny aliens. And again, toys for kids. Vicious aliens. Yeah, I mean, I grew up with, with Next Generation, but um, Deep Space Nine was really like, Wow, this is it's like it's more more. I don't want to say adult, but more mature stories, long running stories. Yeah, yeah, the, with the the see through skull. Um, what did I say? Star Trek Micro Machines. Yes, uh, tons of Star Trek Micro Machines. We were looking at those a little bit before. Yeah, and they did a couple different versions. So I think I have two of these, and then a handful of these little figures. Uh, let me see what else I can grab. Now that we're on to a little other, some other topics. Give me one second. I went to grab something and I dropped something into another box and now I don't know where it went. But yeah, so the, the men in black micro machines also had the, um, whatever they call this, like the, the cleanup crew to cover up alien things. And then, Oh, that's what I dropped. So here is the, the standard version of their car from men in black. And then they made a version that was uh, like the transformed, super version that mode and i dropped it into another box of a billion things so i'll have to find it um where's the so like i showed you the terminator ones they made the station wagon from terminator 2 it's official folks it's the station wagon from terminator 2 i kid you not <laughs> uh micro machines is this my question? Yeah. So anyway, some junk like that. But let's get back to Star Trek. Because we can look at some of all this other random stuff later. So other different versions of Star Trek ships that we got. Like I said, a bunch of Jap a bunch of Japanese companies got in the game. So there were some slightly large ones with fancy display cases. These are Furuta. And again, like good quality on these. It's definitely bigger than the Micro Machine scale. And then these came out a little bit later, so we actually got things like the Phoenix from Generations, which never appeared in Micro Machines. Uh, Q I have... Okay, so here that's actually a really good question regarding Q. The only Q thing that I have is a large scale action figure of Q as basically Q in a Starfleet captain's uniform. And it's a it's an electronic toy. It talks. There's a button on the back. It says three things over and over and over again. And the only reason why I have that is because my dad, who introduced me to Star Trek when I was little, and my dad loved Star Trek forever, uh, he, he always got a really big kick out of Q. He thought Q was like the funniest character. And so I believe, if I'm remembering cor correctly, I believe I bought that toy for my dad, and he had it uh, in his little office at home forever, and then sort of passed it back on to me later on. But yeah, actually, it, it's upstairs in a closet where I can see it whenever I go in there, but the kids can't get to it and, and destroy it. There was a really great line of Star Trek action figures. Well, eh, I don't know if great is the right word. 
but it was very, very beloved. Let's put it that way. By modern standards, and it, this is literally the only one I have around. By modern standards, they're they're showing it's showing its age certainly. But yeah, at the time, these were like, these were the, the hottest things around. People definitely collected these. And they, oh my god, they did characters in every version of their uniforms, dress uniforms, standard uniforms, color variations, battle damaged, exactly, just ex extensive line. Um, there were uh, transporter versions where they were partly clear with, with glitter inside, just huge and you can find a lot of these for pretty cheap uh because this was when they were still like really really mass producing these toys so like i said you can find a lot of these on ebay and and other places <laughs> the blue fish guy yeah yeah there were there were a lot of these toys out there so yeah i just have Riker in this scale and then again the um the q and the larger put him back there we go All right, so what other <laughs> yeah, the, the sex ghost, which they referenced in uh, Lower Decks, which I just watched. So I did just subscribe, resubscribe to CBS All Access so I could watch Discovery. Uh, I hadn't watched Lower, Lower Decks until last week. I watched the whole... 10 episodes. Um, I'm just going to say Lower Decks, it, it's not really for me. I didn't, I didn't love it, but that's fine. It's, I definitely saw a lot of people were enjoying it, talking about it on, on Twitter and such things. And that's great. I love that. I love that now there are different Star Trek things for different people. And that's fantastic. It's, it doesn't, Star Trek certainly doesn't have to be and shouldn't be monolithic. It's such a great universe and there's so many stories to tell that I'm happy that there are different versions. Um, Lower Decks, to me, and actually my, my wife made this comment because she heard it on, she's like, oh, is this just like an animated Orville? I was like, yep, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and Oogly, that's, you know, and that, that's certainly a... A perspective that that I've seen reflected in some people haven't liked the direction that Trek has gone at all in recent years, and you know, then I then I encourage you to go back and watch the old stuff that you still enjoy, and that's fine too. I'm certainly I'm a cheerleader for the property, um, but you know, if people don't like this or that about it, you know, that's that's fine. It doesn't like I said, there's there's different Trek for different people. I I really liked Discovery. I really liked season one and season two. After the first couple episodes, it took a couple episodes to get for me to get into it, but then I really enjoyed it. I just started season three last night. I saw the first episode. It was very interesting. I'm looking forward to see how they how they go with it. Um, Picard, Picard, I didn't love. It just felt to me like a story that was interesting, but not a story that I was really looking for if that makes sense um yeah hallmark hallmark makes a lot of star trek ships in different different sizes different replicas uh they used to make electronic ones that had like the big uh plug to plug into a string of lights which was really annoying Late, more recent ones don't have all of that. They're just a little switch. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, just, this is so great. Because, yeah, just among you guys watching right now, there's some very different opinions on on which shows you like and which you don't. And and that's... And again, to me, that's... I, I can appreciate that. But again, there's things that some people like and some people don't like. But as long as, you know... But I would say that there is Trek for everyone. And not every one of us is going to like every different version but that's okay. See, Arsenal Roy, you like Lower Decks, 
and that's great. I liked parts of it when they started getting like super self-referential to <laughs> a previous series. It's like, oh, I know that reference. I know that reference. So I like that stuff. But um, yeah, it's you know what, it's all good. And I'll say, while I while I didn't love Picard, and I guess I would say I didn't really like Lower Decks. I certainly want toys from their ships. Please, please, please give me those ships. Mattel was briefly in the Star Trek game. They did a line of ships from the reboot movies, which I did not love. But uh, this is the horrendous design for the Klingon Bird of Prey. I'm not a fan of this design, but it's a Star Trek ship. I think this was on sale. I think I got this for three dollars or something. So I'm like, all right, I'll I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, and Orville Orville's another one. Like some people love Orville, and yeah, or Orville is Trek. It's Seth MacFarlane just made his own Star Trek show with and with different names for things. Um, I'll tell you, I liked Orville a lot more before. Discovery started, and then I was like, "Oh, now there's real Star Trek. I don't need, I don't need the Orville." <laughs> but it was, it's enjoyable. It, it's coming back, right? There's going to be another season on Hulu at some point, I think. Yeah, Expanse is fantastic. Do we really need more? Oh, we oh, yes, we definitely need more more Star Trek. Um, this this line was actually really frustrating because it was these toys were really hard to find. They made there was a, a set of these. There was a, a lineup. So here we have and it uh, and the other thing too, it was a mix. So most of the new toys were from the reboot movies. So here you see they've got they've got the Kelvin. This horrible bird of prey. They had an enterprise. They did a uh, what's the the dreadnought, the vengeance. But then they would mix it in with like a classic Excelsior, which I love. And again, like these ships were really hard to find in most cases, except for like ugly ones like this one. Uh, so yeah, I I was not sad when Mattel lost the license and stopped making these. I was like, okay, I, I don't I don't need to try to. I know, right? The Beastie Boys. Uh, can't can't have Star Trek without Beastie Boys, I guess. There was a gigantic series of these larger scale ships. Now, these are plastic. They often came, but not always, they often came with electronics. Usually by pressing down on the bridge would light up things like the nacelles, um, it would have, you know, battle sounds and things. This one, obviously, the batteries are long dead or removed. I don't remember which. Uh, these, these would have huge bases. So in the old, old, old days, there were Playmates made ships. And you can recognize those because they're really soft and chunky and not on model at all. Um, and then much later, Diamond Select Toys in conjunction with art asylum it's it's basically the same company but um, but they made these which yeah are much much closer to being on model and yeah this is the mirror nx enterprise which is super cool you get all this all this cool deco on there yeah so these are fun uh they take up a lot of room so they're not the easiest things to display i have i have a handful of these not not a lot but yeah, Aridance, ex exactly. <laughs> as I say, as I talk about a lot, you've got to reuse those molds. As often as you can. Uh, so yeah, I've got this one. I have two different Enterprise E's in this line, and they're sizable. Um, I have the, the Enterprise D that was in a, a Comic-Con exclusive that actually transforms into the future version. Again, these are really big toys. I can't get a lot of them. 
uh, easily on screen. In fact, I have two still in the box that I have not opened because they made two versions of my favorite, well, one of my favorite ship designs. So, and it's so big, I'll do a flyby of it. So here we go. Dun, 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 dun. So this is the Enterprise B and it's really big and it's really long. <laughs> so one day I'll have the ability to open this and put it somewhere. But yeah, I have this one and the standard Excelsior. Oh, and this one. So you can see some of the lights in this one. Oh, Kirk talks. Cool. <gasps> Oogly. Oh, now we can't be friends anymore. The Excelsior class is ugly. Excelsior class is one of my favorite spaceship designs of all time. Shabad lag, you you want to be a geek? You can be. You can certainly geek out with us. That's what we do here on the Norse Meat Channel. Hey, Mexican Robin. Uh, yeah. So again, I'm a big fan of this design, both versions. So I have both of these gigantic electronic ships, and one day I'll have the place. I'll have the place to put them, and I'll actually open them up. Uh, the Excelsior version, it's all Sulu talking, which is super great. Yeah, it's. It's big. Yeah, this was the Starship Legends. But, uh, this line, oh, man. Um, Diamond was supposed to keep making these, and it just takes... And then all of a sudden, like, the amount of time it took to produce one of these just got longer and longer and longer, and then, I don't know. I, they're still supposed to be coming out with more of these, but I don't, I don't think it's actually happening. Uh, the Enterprise J, I have the Eagle Moss version somewhere, the small one. And I know they've actually done a, a larger one, an XL version too. Um, do I have that out? Hold on one second. Let me see if I got it. Shoot. No, I guess... I know I opened it, but I don't have it here in this uh, in this room, unfortunately. But yes, there is... Yeah, they, so the Enterprise J, which you saw for a split second in the Enterprise show when they were accessing the future, um, it's a really, it's a really weird design. I wish I had it. I, I think I, I think mine is upstairs. Um, but it has an oval shaped uh, saucer section, but that's sideways. And then these really tiny little arms linking up to very narrow needle like nacelles. Uh, but yes, Eagle Moss has made a, a version that's about this big. And then they came out with, or it's coming out an XL version. That's almost a foot long or wide, whatever the configuration is. Um, these are these are Mattel, right? So there were a couple of smaller scale versions of ships from the from the later movies. I'm trying to see. Yeah, these are also Hot Wheels, so they're Mattel. So there's the Enterprise itself. They did two versions, one standard, one battle damaged. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. And it's just little like tampo stickers um not these toys are these toys are garbage so the saucer and the the main hull here are metal then the cells are this junky almost rubbery plastic i think it's a safety concern like so you don't poke yourself with the so stupid and it came with these just again just awful little bases this one's cooler It's, and and again, like it's not quite on model either, but it's close. 
It almost looks like a bottle opener. Now, if you're into modeling and hobby stuff, there are a ton of Star Trek models out there that have been coming out forever. Uh, my favorite, of course, is that this line that AMT did a couple of years ago. Oh, the second gray one. So this is the uh, from Star Trek Beyond from the second movie. This was the ship that like the Black Ops version of the Federation was making. Uh, it's ridiculous. This was like 10 times the size of the Enterprise, but it only needed a crew of like five people. Oh, Into Darkness. Sorry, that's the one, right? Into Darkness. That's the second one. Beyond was the third one. So yeah, but like this only needed a crew of five people to run it, and it had all these crazy weapons. Yeah, the Vengeance. But again, like the the actual ship does not look exactly like this. It's it's kind of weird. Do I? Yeah, I mean, what, favorite toys? Hmm. I mean, I have favorite ships, and then I just buy those ships in every different versions that come along. Uh, so, yeah, so AMT did these really cool things called Star Trek Ships of the Line, and these are simple 11 parts that are snap fit. You just punch them together. Um, you don't have to glue them. Of course, you can if you want. You just got to be careful. It comes with like a little trading card. There were four of these in the first wave The the really frustrating thing with this line is that they release these in case assortments. Urgh. Now, if you've watched me and you've heard me talk about case assortments. So case assortments are how Target and Walmart order action figures, right? They don't order a Han Solo action figure. They order a case from Hasbro that has two Han Solos, two Luke Skywalkers, one Leia, and, you know, one Darth Vader, whatever. So it was really difficult to buy these in the specific ships that you wanted because stores would just buy a case of them and they'd be like, well, no, we have a case and it's all the same skew because it just came out of a case. It was like, no, no, I want to be able to order specific ones that I want. Um, so I think these didn't sell as well because of that. And it made me very frustrated. There were, there were eBay sellers who were selling, like, random ones of these. So that was also really weird because I guess they just bought a case and they didn't want to they didn't want to sell out of the ones that everybody wanted and then be stuck with the rest of them. Um, so I have the... So actually, I ended up with all three of the Federation designs. Um, I haven't opened these yet. And then I, I don't have the Klingon, but I don't, I don't really care. I really want... I mostly want Federation. Uh, in fact, I did build the Defiant. Let me grab that. And it looks great. I mean, these things are obviously, they're pre-painted, pre-decaled. Uh, had a little trouble actually building this one. I think just because the Defiant is such a big, you know, essentially like a, a clamshell that we got to just jam those parts together. So I had some seams. Yeah, actually, you can see right there, there's, there's like a little tiny seam there, which is kind of unsightly, but... But they look great, and you can... I mean, this one, I bought this one at a local hobby store. It was $17.50. So, you know, for a, technically it is a model kit. You did build it, but they're neat. Uh, so, yeah, Hudsonizer, like, the Defiant is my favorite ship. So I have a million different versions of this toy model in all different sizes, scales, and otherwise. Yeah, the collector aspect. Um, AMT also makes just a ton of Star Trek ships and other scales all the way up to super gigantic ones that you can do uh, lighting inside and, and all of that good stuff. So yeah, currently, define or why Star... I know, right? That's a really good question and I've seen lots of geeks argue that out online uh, for sure. Um... Yeah, Oogly, there are, a, there are a few, exactly, there are a few series that they've technically said that they are going to do that I, I think they've, they've a lot of that is just on hold at the moment for pandemic stuff, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. 
especially Pike. Man, I loved Captain Pike on Discovery. I thought, uh, was what's his name, Anson Mount? I thought he just did such a good job. Definitely want to see more of that. Uh, yeah. So anyway, so modern current Star Trek collectibles. WizKids continues with the Star Trek Attack Wing. They've very much slowed down on this. Uh, they don't release single expansions like this anymore. They're box sets with four ships. Um, they're called faction packs, but sometimes they're interfaction. It just depends on what the theme is. Those come out every so often. There are a few more that are scheduled to be on the way. But the main, of course, the main thing that, that is still active these days, it is Eagle Moss. Uh, this isn't the packaging they use anymore. I have a million of these in the closet to open one day. But um, Eagle Moss Starships collection. That's their baseline. So ships from movies, every different TV show, at least up until pre-discovery. Let's put it that way. Pre-discovery. Now, they do these in, again, these are like anywhere between three and five inch ships. They also have an XL line where they've they've taken the, like the basically the most popular ships and blown them up into 10 to 12 inch versions, which are super cool. I don't actually have any of those yet, but I will. Um, and then they do have, they did have a discovery line. Those ships were midway between the Starships collection and the XL versions, which was a little bit frustrating, but what are you going to do? And they've just, just very recently announced that the, that the Discovery line is now, they gave it some kind of silly name, like the Star Trek Universe line. So that line is going to continue with Discovery ships, but also add ships from Picard and other things. So we'll get other newer release things in that line specifically i don't know if they've said they're going to do lower deck ships i think they've hinted at it but i don't know if they've confirmed that they also do ships in this line from star trek online some of the unique ships from there which are pretty cool so yeah this is a lot that eagle moss is still doing and again they've done hundreds of these already going really deep like this one for instance so I was talking about some of these great battles in Star Trek where they just needed a bunch of background ships and they didn't want them all to look the same like they did in Picard. <clears throat> but, uh... Well, actually, this isn't one of those. Sorry, I was thinking of a different one. But this is... Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, the Jaeger. So, like, this is a... This is a uh, one of those ships they kit-bashed as a model to then put in the sh in the show. So clearly, this thing has. God, this is the ugliest ship they ever made. <laughs> it's it's so ugly. So this back part is. Oh my god! So essentially, they took a couple of different models in the actual model shop and they just smashed them together to make a new ship. But it's canon. It's called the Jaeger. Uh, it is. It's insanely ugly. But it has a charm. But it's pretty ugly. <laughs> it's unique. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Arsenal Roy. And that's that's pretty much what they did. But yeah, like I said, especially in that 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 the main the big battles, like they just want a lot they just wanted a lot of background stuff that was different. So yeah, and and Eagle Moss, oh boy, have they made a lot of uh a lot of use out of those. Every one of those ships has has had a model now. Even like the ones that are just a blip in the background of one single frame. These aren't super cheap. They're about $22 a piece. The price has gone up very slightly over the years. Um, I have quite a few of these pretty much just the federation ships that's the thing i find the best with a line like this is like pick the thing you like and just get those and then you don't have to complain that they make a billion of them obviously the most of what they do is federation so i'm still buying quite a lot of these but they're great they're a lot of metal content so like this whole piece is metal 
There's some plastic back here. There's some neat translucent plastic in the uh, in the cells. You get some light piping effects sometimes. Faces are really good and sturdy. And then they come with these magazines, which again, they're, it's a little bit different nowadays. The It's smaller, more compact pack, compact packaging, but they actually give you a fair amount of information, both in-universe and how they built the models. So let's see. So this all gives you stuff. And then, yeah, like the actual studio model. Um... And then just whatever. Obviously for this one, it, it doesn't have a lot of story time because it would only exist as a, a background model. So they'll fill you in on other interviews and, and stuff like that. Uh, these magazines, sadly, are notorious for having some errors in them, some omissions. But overall, overall, it's worth it. And yes, like I said, I have quite, quite a collection of these. <laughs> Ugly, that's funny. Yeah, I've I've heard of Star Wreck. I don't know. Have I seen that or have I just heard about it? Wow. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Rabbit Wombat. That's that's what my streams are all about. You know, you know this. You you certainly know this by now, at least. Uh, so yeah, they've already announced they're doing the the Sirena from. Picard, that's the first of the expanded whatever universe-y um, they call that new line. I have two of the Discovery ships. I have the, the Discovery itself and the Buran, which again had very little screen time, but that was uh, Lorca's original ship. It has a cool four-nacelle pattern, but it's in an X shape. Um, again, that's not not in this room right now, so I can't grab that at the moment. Hey, the moon rules. Um, which Star Trek character am I? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I see little bits of myself in so many different Star Trek characters over the years. I like an awful lot of them. But yeah. Um, and there, like I said, there are other little random one-off things here and there. A lot of Hallmark... Uh, Ornament ships, like I said, that have come out over the years. I have a few of those. Um, yeah, like I said, there's a there's a display case of mine that has a lot of Star Trek stuff in it. I just can't actually get into it right now. The Baron was essentially an X-Wing. The back of it was... Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it down from upstairs next time and show it. Yeah, I don't know what, what characters is most like me. I don't know. I always really liked Garrick from Deep Space Nine. Man, and so quotable, some of his lines about truth. Such such a great character. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other Star Trek thing I really want to talk about. Yeah, like I said, there's some other ships that I, I can bring on at other times to show. But otherwise, I think that that about... Yes, right, I'm my own... Cat. Barkley, right, aren't we all just actually Barkley? Probably, probably very many of us. Uh, oh, there is, there was another line of Japanese ships that, again, we looked at the, the itty bitty tiny ones that were... Roughly micro machine scale. These from Fruita were a little bit bigger. Uh, there was another line that were actually they were pretty close to the Eagle Moss scale, but were plastic and were a lot cheaper than these are. Uh, again, I I cannot actually get to them right now, which is frustrating. But I'll remember to bring those back another time. We can take a look at those. Some of my other more rare things. Uh, Mattel did a Comic-Con exclusive one year that was... It was the Enterprise in the dry dock. The sort of rectangular one that 
just sort of folds over and it was a uh, it was enclosed and then you could unfold it to reveal the little enterprise hot wheel it was sort of like like this kind of scale i think a little bit bigger um, but again that's in the display case over there that i cannot actually get to at the moment but yes star trek it's great almost all of it for everybody <laughs> Uh, even if you don't like some of it, that's fine. There's other Star Trek out there. They continue to make more. Man, are we ever, are we going to get more movies? What are there, like three different movies that are technically in, in the works? I have zero interest in a Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, Quentin Tarantino Star Trek movie. Just nothing about that sounds enticing to me. But hey, I mean... Just like with Star Wars, if a brand that I like continues to be successful, not every aspect of it needs to be for me. And that's perfectly fine. Because if people are watching it and it's successful, that means they're going to do more with the property and they're going to try more different things in it and there will be more things for me. And I think that's something that that geeks need to understand and be a little bit more accepting of because that's how we get more of things that we like oh pete i am i am 100 percent with you on that hot take for sure my wife and i we a little while ago we were like what 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 are all the movies that that tarantino has made and we made the list of them and we're like hmm we like we actually genuinely like Fewer than half of them, but <laughs> she said from the other room, way fewer than half of them. Uh, yeah. I mean, talk about just like one of the most self-indulgent directors of all time. And hey, look, and no no shade against anybody who likes his movies. They're they're well-crafted for sure. Yeah, <laughs> all the female officers are, are barefoot, a hundred percent, but um. But yeah, I mean, it's Quentin Tarantino's a thing. He he certainly has a lot of fans, and that's fine. But I don't I don't need him mixed up in my Star Trek. Uh, yeah, it would certainly be different for sure. Yeah, Four Rooms Four Rooms is is adorable. That movie is really cute. I like that movie. But yes, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I don't I don't know where Star Trek is going to go as far as as films. And I know they had they had a script that they really wanted to do for the next in the sort of the Kelvin timeline movies, but that apparently has fallen apart just because they can't get all the actors together. Um, I, I'm I'm fine with that. I I like I said I did not love the the Kelvin universe movies. <laughs> oh man, the moon rules. That's that's brutal. Yeah. Uh, a few of the old movies are are like bright and shining instances of oh that one was really good, but overall yeah ser the series are better than the movies. I, I would definitely agree with that statement. But yeah, as long as we're getting more more shows, there's always video game stuff happening with Star Trek that people really like. Samuel Jackson as Q or as A Q, sure. Yeah, I know. I know Tarantino was in. Yeah, he was in and involved with forums. Yeah, I, I don't think that's like a a Tarantino movie uh, overall. But um, but yeah, we could definitely. I can. I could definitely talk about Star Trek ships for days. And yes, if you saw it to the end of Picard, there was a lot of controversy among the geek community. Uh, so that so the show Picard. I, and I'm not giving any spoilers, but there are not a lot of new Federation ship designs in that show. There are there are a fair number of, of new ship designs for other species. Not so much Federation. Um, there is a scene toward the end of the series where we do see a big, a sizable Federation fleet. Uh, at, at first glance... It appears that they are all just copies of the same model. They're all the same. 
Um, apparently, if you zoom in or if you talk to the creators, they're not technically all the exact same. They're all basically the same. Yeah, Zenblade. It's sort of like the same uh, main body, and then there are a couple of slight variations. So they're technically different models, um, but they are very close. And and it was it was somewhat disappointing. Again, because we're talking about a an era of Star Trek that that we haven't seen before. You know, slightly, of course, it's it's just after lots of things that we've seen before. But you know, if we're gonna get new ships, it would be cool to you know see them shown off. Now, I don't I don't begrudge them the idea that as they as they move along in technology, it certainly does make sense that they would come up with a a, a basic body that is super functional. And yeah, there would be slight swap outs for for different types of mission profiles. Totally get it. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so yeah. And I, I think the design was kind of cool. I forget what they, what the technical term for the new, the new one is, but um, Eagle Moss has said that they're going to make at least one version of that in the, well, it's the bigger line, but I am looking forward to that. Cause I think the, I think it definitely looked, looked cool. I just want to see more. Um, yeah, Pete. Yes, one hundred percent. We definitely need, uh, we need more. Yeah, Federation versus Starfleet. They those are different things. I'm halfway to being pro clan. I don't know what that means. One day, Zardoz, you you're gonna have to explain all of the uh, BattleTech stuff to me. One hundred percent. All right. Well, folks. I love talking spaceships, and I could do it all day long, but I do have some family stuff to do. Oh, I am i am not looking forward to, to watching the news today, but I will be, because it's important to know what is happening. Yeah, oh, I know that there is a lot of Battletech lore and decades worth of, worth of content for that property out there. I do have some Battletech toys just randomly around. Uh, I've got a, a couple of old little like pewter models, miniatures rather, a couple of plastic things, some of the, the ones that WizKids did. Not a lot, and I don't know. I couldn't tell you what any of their names are. Some of the, Robo, the Robotech designs. No, I know. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, Battletech has been around forever, practically. So clearly there are a lot of people out there who like it. And that's great. I just, I just don't know it very well. There was a cartoon once, right? I think I saw some of the cartoon. I don't know. Um, okay, let me bring up. Let's see who is on to raid. One hour ago, marketing. Yeah, I don't need that. I already voted. Okay. Uh, oh yes, and then and if you didn't see the tweet, and thank you Zardoz for being a, even ahead of me on the tweeting, but um, I do have my YouTube channel up and running, which so far is just uh, basically it's just VODs from my streams, but in another place where there might be more discoverability on YouTube versus versus Twitch for non live stuff, but um, got some stuff up there, so yeah, I'll I'll be uploading sort of like the the highlight reel, the, be the best of the streams onto YouTube. Who knows? Maybe I'll do specific YouTube content in the future. I have no specific plans for that at the moment, but you never know. Um, let's see here. Oh, we don't talk about the cartoon. Okay, interesting. I, man, I don't remember it enough. Oh, The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest. I have toys from The Real Adventures of Johnny Quest. In name only, okay, understood. Just like, uh, just like the Godzilla movie, the first American Godzilla movie, Gino, as they called it, Godzilla in name only. Uh. <laughs> oh, there's controversy about the battle, the BattleTech cartoon. Love it. I love to see nerd controversy. Okay, yeah, let's check out. Uh, Hyper's always doing cool stuff, and yeah, if they're hanging out with voters, that's even better. Uh, yeah, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me on this. Great Star Trek. Like I said, I could talk about Star Trek forever. 
I have so many more toys I could bring out and show and, and look at. And like I said, I, I will do more again one day when I can get to the display case that has some some of the really cool stuff in it. Otherwise, I will see everybody or whoever wants to come back tomorrow for Warhammer on Wednesday. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Vote if you haven't. Let's hope today goes well. And yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what... Yeah, it's time to get time to get drunk. That's not a bad idea. Hopefully everything goes well and tomorrow's stream will be like, yes, it's great. We're living in a, the start of a whole new world. We'll see. All right. See you, everybody. Go, go say hi to Hyper. All right, I'm closing down. Benjamin, 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 mommy just said mommy has to get to work. Mommy's working today, buddy. <laughs>